Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori, if you're new here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you some recipes that we created off of right around $10. We are a family of four. I eat vegan, my husband eats the standard American diet, and my children eat whatever we give them. At least um, we try. <laughs> if you have toddlers, then you know. So we went to Walmart and spent $10 and got super creative in the kitchen. We did not get any meat, but if you wanted to add meat to any of these meals, you absolutely could. Frozen chicken is pretty inexpensive as well as canned chicken, canned tuna, canned salmon. I think there is uh, canned beef out there as well. So you could use that, but we are getting most of our nutrition from beans and vegetables. We log all of our meals into Chronometer just to make sure we are getting the vitamins that we need. The things that I didn't include in this are going to be some oils and some spices, but I figured we have some of that lying around. If you don't, that's okay. You could omit those seasonings and spices to your meals. But I was really excited about how these turned out. I'm super excited to share these with you. Whenever I see these types of videos, I see beans and rice as main sources of food and that is all fine and good, but I um, wanted to get just a little bit more creative with things. If you are experiencing any food insecurity in your home, please dial 211, reach out to someone. There are resources for you out there. This is just something that my family and I wanted to do. It's fun to do every now and again. Maybe you want to save up for the month for something big. Maybe those funds need to go to medical bills. Some of us are experiencing job insecurity right now. So this is just some ideas that you could have in your pantry. It's kind of based off the video that I last did on some emergency foods that I keep in my pantry. So most of these are shelf stable. Some of them are freezer stable. I'm going to go back in time and read you all of the receipts that I got from Walmart and then I went and price checked at my local Target. Just in case you wanted to check Target out and see if your local Target is a little cheaper than Walmart. They're honestly right around the same for me, maybe a dollar more at Target. You could go to your local supermarket, although I did that, I price matched and Walmart still came in cheaper. I'm lucky enough in my community right now, a lot of the people that are growing some agriculture around us have given us some corn, some squashes, apples, just really great things that we can live off of. So I'm excited to show you next week's video and that's gonna be everything that we've been given. We're gonna get creative again and see what we can make with all of this amazing fall produce that that's coming into our household. If you are new here, hi, hello, my name is Tori. I'd love it if you stuck around and hit that subscribe button. We make videos two to three times a week on just about anything, recipes, budgeting, Colorado life, family life, and we would love it if you became part of our family. So without further ado, let's get right into the list here, and then I'm gonna show you some really tasty recipes that we experienced this week. Hey friends, I'm back. I'm here to share with you the receipt, so I just calculated everything. I got everything from Walmart, but I'm going to show you the Target price as well. So the eggs that we got were $1.58. You could get them at Target for $1.69. The flour we got was $1.22. You could get it at Target for $1.59. Dried chickpeas, $1.18. Target, $0.99. Cents. Pinto beans that were also dry, $1.00. Target, $0.99. Cents. Tomato sauce in a can, $0.74. Cents. At Target, $0.65. Cents. Cream cheese, $1.46, Target, $1.59. Mixed veggies that are frozen are $0.84 cents at Walmart, but they're $0.89 cents at Target. Sorry, I'll keep trying to look up here, but I'm reading from this receipt here, and it's such small handwriting or lettering. So uh, frozen spinach, a dollar. Spinach at Target, $1.79. Ramen noodles, they are at Walmart for 34 cents a piece, but at Target, it's 34 cents for two because you buy a box of six for 99 cents and then you divide it and just um, say they're 17 cents a piece. I think it comes out at a dollar three. And then we did some baked bread and that was a dollar, um, the French bread section. And Walmart is a dollar because I did pick up I didn't have a chance to do the day-old bread but go ahead and get yourself some day-old bread that way it's 50 cents and you can save a little money there at Target it's a dollar 59 I haven't seen a day-old bread spot in Target let me know if yours has one down in the comments below and maybe I'll check out another Target my uh, the one that I looked at definitely doesn't have one um, 
the potatoes that we got, just regular russets, $2.27 for a five pound bag, and they are $2.39 at Target. Walmart's gonna total at $13.08, and then Target's gonna total at $14.50. Now, I touched on sauces and oils and things like that. If you don't wanna buy a whole thing of sauce, next time you go to a fast food restaurant, just ask for extra sauce, you can do it that way. Or if you are at the grocery store and you are purchasing these things, you do have the right to the deli counter and they always have ketchup and hot sauce and things like that. So you're welcome to do that as well. Obviously don't grab like a million of them, but one or two will get you through the week. And I think that's perfectly fine as long as you are giving money to the store. And then for oils, you definitely don't need the oil, but you could use water instead. I'm going to use oil just because I have it and I'm going to be able to use it with multiple recipes. Now that we've covered the receipt and our little intro here, we are gonna get into these recipes. Please remember to keep an open mind. We got as creative as we could in the kitchen. It's not gonna be the prettiest looking dinner you've ever seen, but I'm gonna try my best to impress you all and show you that it's pretty easy to eat like this. So I had some really delicious meals this week. I was super excited. It made plenty of leftovers, so I didn't have to pack any extra lunch. And I'm normally a coffee and fruit gal in the morning so if you do like different things for breakfast eggs and you have time to make that kind of thing go ahead and add a few extra dollars to your meal plan but I was able to feed my family of four for just around $13.08 so I'm really excited I hope you are excited and we're gonna get we're gonna get right into the video the first recipe we are making are these mashed potatoes. We are essentially having breakfast for dinner, but we are going to make extra mashed potatoes to make them into two other recipes. I love doing this. Potatoes are great and they are super filling. So you are gonna need some eggs for this. Also some potatoes and some cream cheese, an onion and some flour. You're gonna start off by peeling the potatoes if you would like, you don't have to. And then you're gonna boil it in some water and salt and wait till it's soft. I usually cover mine and then leave it for around 15 minutes and then they're pretty soft. They are easy to mash. And at this time I actually ended up adding some of the frozen spinach. So I have a fourth block of the cream cheese, about a fourth of the onion, and then about a fourth of the spinach pack. I'm going to put the potatoes in there and mash it all together. And then I'm going to add some flour to about half of it. Um, you will see here that I reserve some of the mashed potatoes for a recipe later on in the week. And then I reserve another part of the mashed potatoes with the flour in it so I can make gnocchi later on in the week. And then I'm going to make these little potato pancakes tonight for our breakfast for dinner. So you're going to have whatever desired consistency you want. Honestly, the cream cheese really gives it a lot of flavor. And I added about a cup of flour to start. You will see with potato pancakes, it really depends on a lot of different factors, but just add as much flour so it's not sticky anymore and you can put it in a well-oiled pan fried on both sides i've done it in the oven before i've also done it in the air fryer i've also deep fried them so honestly you could do this however you want but i'm going to cook these and then i'm gonna head on over start my eggs and i'm going to make some banana pancakes for the kids as well
So I ended up going back after my family was done and making myself a batch. I um, obviously can't eat the cream cheese, so I made them without. They turned out just fine. Same crispy, tasty flavor. And then I served mine with these pinto beans. You absolutely don't have to, but beans are my substitute for egg here. I will drop the recipe down in the description box. I did them low and slow in the crock pot, and they're super easy. Moving on to the next meal, this is some rosé ramen. I've actually made this before. I really enjoy ramen noodles. I don't use the seasoning packets, but you are going to need two of these. You could save those seasoning packets for whatever you want. Um, you're going to need about a third of the tomato sauce jar and a little bit of water as well. You're going to need about a fourth of the spinach and a fourth of the onion, and then you're going to need that cream cheese again. So I'm going to put all of this together and serve mine without the cream cheese again. You were my best friend Didn't care about the rules Good on the weekends I'll be in fools Drifting the deep space So brave and so stupid Just like the movies How it's gonna stay In the fight with you Just thinking So I'd say I added about five ounces of water. Now that everything's starting to come together, I'm actually going to add the ramen noodles now and they come folded and then I just unfold them when they cook and I flip them over. I'm going to cover it with another four to five ounces of water, add my seasonings, and then I am going to serve it up. This one is delicious, it's filling, and it's a crowd pleaser. I served mine with some more vegetables and some bread with a little bit of butter on it. Obviously, butter is optional. We had it, so I added it, but that does not count towards the $13 that we spent. This was super delicious. The kids loved it, and we had leftovers. Next up is going to be this pizza crust. I will show you what I put on top of this. I am going to use an egg for the family's pizza crust, but I'm not gonna use one for mine. It actually just works out without one, so it does not lose any flavor. I just always try and add some extra things to my kids' meals whenever I can. And I'm gonna use some leftover mashed potatoes for the toppings, so kind of like a pierogi pizza but you all know how much I love pierogies. I'm going to do half the pierogi pizza and the other half a buffalo chickpea dip. Please don't forget all of these measurements are going to be listed as best as I can remember down below, but essentially three cups of flour here, two and a half to three, I'd say. You're going to need two teaspoons of baking powder, a little bit of salt, and then that egg in the middle if you would like, followed by some warm water, not hot, not cold, but warm. Next up is this buffalo chickpea dip. You could absolutely use chicken. Chicken's probably gonna be a little bit more expensive than these 89 cent chickpeas. They are dried. I cook them just like I did the pinto beans and I will leave that recipe in the description box. It's super easy, but you do want them to break apart here. Obviously not pop out of your hands, but they should be smashable. And they cooked for around nine hours in the crock pot. It actually takes a little bit of time for these dried beans. You're also going to use half of this cream cheese, so another fourth of that block. And then you're going to use hot sauce. So I have this here, but again, like I said in the beginning, you can pick up a packet or two whenever you're out for a fast food run or at the grocery store, as long as you purchase from that grocery store. I'm going to put everything into my food processor 
mixer with some dried parsley, salt, and pepper, and then top it with some garlic powder. And then that's gonna be the topping for our pizza. And you're just going to use half of this recipe and then save the other half for another recipe during the week. City that's looking fun And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself I can be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out So try not to hold Tonight's meal is going to be like a hodgepodge of everything. So we're going to do some buffalo chickpea dip. So I'm just going to heat it up and serve it with this demi French bread. And then we are also going to be doing some gnocchi with some rosé sauce, kind of like the ramen rosé sauce that we did. So I have some leftover mashed potatoes mixed with flour. I'm going to add some more flour in there, a fourth of this tomato sauce, and a fourth of this cream cheese. And then I'm just going to do some oven-baked french fries. I know it's a little random, but it was super filling and we had plenty of food left. So here's everything ready to go in the oven. You do not have to cook cut them like this and you don't have to add oil but I am adding some oil salt and pepper and then I'm going to cut up this bread and toast it up with some oil and then I am just working this flour into the potato mixture it absorbs it pretty quickly but I do need a little bit more flour than this I ended up adding about a half cup more so again all of these measurements will be in the description box down below so don't panic if you're getting a bit confused but I am going going to put everything on this parchment lined baking sheet and then put it in the oven at 400 for around 30 minutes for these french fries and at the 25 minute mark I'm going to add in those chickpea little dips with buffalo as well as the bread. I have formed the gnocchi dough into these little logs and then you just take a wooden spoon or a knife and cut them into the desired shape. They actually end up being cut one more time because we like our gnocchi a little smaller, but it totally is up to you however you like it. They're gonna go in a salted pot of boiling water until they float to the top of the pot. Then they're going on a frying pan to mix in with those sauces.
I thought it would be a good idea to save this for the end of the week, but it's essentially all the ingredients that we didn't use made into a soup. You know, I like to do this on Sunday. My son's muffin is just sitting here, but I do have some potatoes here, about one and a half diced up. I did peel it. And then I'm gonna use half a bag of the mixed vegetables as well as the rest of the spinach and some onion and then some pinto beans. That's going low and slow for eight hours. Super easy and straightforward. You could absolutely use veggie stock with this, but for the sake of saving money, I am just going to be putting about two cups of water into the soup and then some salt and pepper. I know that you are having a hard time right now That everything seems to crumble around you I know that you feel all alone in this world But you have to and for our last meal we are going to have breakfast for dinner again but we are having it in a quiche style so on the stove i have the remainder of our potatoes i have some of the potato pancakes left over as well as some onion and then some coconut oil and some of the frozen spinach i am going to cook this all together for around 20 minutes in this cast iron on medium heat and then i'm going to add my remaining seven eggs that i have in the carton and i'm going to whisk those together with salt pepper you could add a splash of milk if you have some but it's not necessary and i'm going to bake it in the oven at 375 for around 30 minutes minutes and then serve it up again my kids wanted some banana pancakes i did forget to mention that i bought one banana for 19 cents at walmart that is not on my grocery list in the beginning but that is just to make some easy pancakes the kids love it when there's peanut butter or chocolate or banana or apple even in their pancakes i did add a sprinkle of cinnamon and then i ended up serving this all for dinner we love breakfast for dinner it's super cheap super quick and is a crowd pleaser Alrighty, my friends, that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you got some meal inspiration and some ways to cook on the cheap for your family. Again, if you are experiencing food insecurities in your home, dial 211. Reach out to any local resources you may have. That's what they are there for. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative, and I will see you next time, y'all. Bye. So caught up in the middle, thinking of drowning in those blue eyes. I'm losing sight cause I am falling